Hi everyone and welcome back to Backseat Drawing. Today I have our guest Angie and we're going to talk about art and draw on this shared canvas together. And we are going to be doing, I don't know, what should we draw? I don't have any idea of what to draw today. Me neither. It's the year of the cow. We can draw some cows. We can draw cows. That's a good idea. We can draw Doja Cat as a cow. I draw bikini cows. <laughs> sure, yeah. I'll beef draw jerky. It. Ew. <laughs> a moose. That's kind of a cow. The beef jerky went a little too dark, a little too fast. You're talking about all these cute cows, and then you went straight to beef jerky. So how did you get into art, and like, what, what got you started? Um, I've always... I've always drawn, and it's one of those things that's been encouraged by people around me. You know how you're young and you, like, look for any sort of validation. Yes. So, so it was one of the things I thought I excelled at, so I just kept at it. But also I like doing it. I come in and out of it. Like, I haven't really drawn any. I mean, I just finished my first art piece of the year a couple days ago, and it was, like, some watercolor piece. I don't know if you saw it on Twitter. But um, I don't know. I, I struggle with like between wanting to be a quote unquote real artist and like just doing just doing me. So far, doing me is working out, even though I'm really inconsistent in my styles. I don't think it's. I feel like everyone demonizes being inconsistent right now. It's just kind of right. weird. In the industry, I think a lot of people look for people that are diverse, That's or they good. they call it like being a chameleon in art. At least in the field that I'm going into is kind of what they look for. I can see that. Um, like in a lot of studios, I guess, like if, if you're not the leader of the project, then like you have to, I guess, conform to like whatever styles and style and rules they give yeah. you, I guess. I don't really know much about the industry. I like wasn't really in the art industry. The, the closest thing I did was like interior design. Um, this is like a hobby that I like drifted in and out of. Uh, do you have a degree from college or not yet? Art? Do you have a college degree or not yet? Um, I have I have an architecture degree. I'm working on a science degree right now actually because um, I did work in food and beverage for a long time. I did pastries. Oh yeah, you're a chef, right? Yes, <laughs> I was. I was very recently like put on call. But you know what that means. It just means, like, you're fired, but not really. No. <laughs> well, you're still a chef. They can't take that away from you, you know? That's... No, they can't. But <laughs> it's really bone-breaking work. I mean, like, I think you see me on stream. I, I don't look that str- I'm, like, pretty fragile. I'm, like, little, and, like, they they require you to um, carry a lot of, like, heavy things. Like, the amount of pots I had to carry, that's, like, half my size. And, um... I'm just going to start over. I don't know why I'm drawing. <laughs> oh, no, I think it's good. No. <laughs> okay, okay. okay. I won't. Well, you could delete whatever you want. I'm not going to judge. But, like, judge. just the amount of, like, physical thingies they make you do. I'm just kind of, like, that's not good for my body. I, um, I, like, watch my coworkers who are a lot younger than me complain about, like, their knees, how they're tired all the time. And I vote, this is only my second year, like, beginning my third year into doing this like in the kitchen mm. and I'm just kind of just I don't this isn't the lifestyle I want like this doesn't lend like me creative like license I guess yeah unless it's doing something very small culinary is super hard for sure I don't think I would ever try <laughs> no su- no way I don't think I'd ever go into like cooking or anything I love cooking like as a, as a hobby pastime thing but I would never want to get a degree in it because it just the workload looks insane. Is there a cow muppet? A cow muppet? Is there, is there a cow muppet? Is there? I feel like there isn't like an official character, but Jim Henson has definitely made a cow for Sesame Street or something. He has to have. There has to have been a cow. There definitely has to have been. <laughs> a cow, moo. <laughs> Would they censor the cow on Sesame Street though? Because the udders are like. <laughs> I think they only. Because you, you've seen those puppets, right? They're, like, really big. It takes two people to operate them. Yeah, yeah. So I think... Does your cow have nine udders? <laughs> Is that inaccurate? <laughs> they only have four. That's okay. They only have four? It could be... Um, what, oh, have no. you seen those launch pads? It could be a... Oh. Oh, that's an udder. <laughs> udder this world. Just four udders. Okay. I actually don't know anything about how 
Uh, that's just like what I've seen um, being drawn. That's How do you the, adjust? Oh, okay, I see the density and opacity thing. Go ahead. That's the oh, aesthetic way to draw a cow is with the four udders. For sure. I don't think I could even draw an udder very well. Okay. Is this, is this like a bit, like a flaccid penis? <laughs> <laughs> no! <laughs> Those are so long. Okay. And then you have to, like, draw the nipple part. That's yeah, too detailed. It's <laughs> too realistic for this poor cow. <laughs> oh, no. She needs to make milk. That's her money. That is her money. Oh, my god. Paying cow taxes. Um. <laughs> Let's see. Let me think of things. To th- do, you any, do, do you do any cake decorating? What kind of cooking do you do? Well, I wasn't a cake person at work. I, like, like most workplaces and other in other walks of life, like, People have their favorites, and I wasn't the favorite when it came to cakes. I was the favorite when it came to like uh, I don't know if you ever been to like one of those fancy adult parties where they have like individual one serving desserts. So I would do those. Mm. Oh yeah, so I can have like creative freedom on those, and I, I was fast. I, I I want to say I don't complain, but I complain a lot. <laughs> like I'll do the hard work, but don't expect me not to like say anything about it. So I did those, and it was a lot of basic things that like you don't think about when you when you like take a bite of desserts it's like mass production of like creme brulees because like that's always on the menu steaming creme brulees make sure that they're clean um cake mixes we did our bakery stuff too like cheese plates are also pastry and like in the line of work that we're in just because like all right (laughs) just because like i think the kitchen how it's like divided it's like you know, it's dairy. You guys deal with dairy, so you, you put this shit on a plate. Sorry, yeah, can I yeah. curse here? Can I curse a lot? <laughs> yeah, you could curse, yeah. This okay. is not rated PG. <laughs> so we, we do a lot of that. I mean, like, the cooking part is mostly the custards. And, like, it's a lot of chemistry, which is why I, like, lean towards chemistry. I also wanted to become a, a, a health inspector to um, get back at the restaurants that done me wrong. <laughs> you know? Yes. A little bit of revenge. A little bit. I mean, like that's that's not the only thing that I can do with the chemistry degree. I, I looked it up recently on our. Um, we, we live in Nevada. We live in Las Vegas. So like, public health is a big thing here. I don't know how up to date you are on these things. Probably not very because it's like super boring. But we have the most heart. We have one of the most strictest health departments in the United States. And um, I'm going to ramble a little bit about the health department. It's actually not a federal program. It's privatized in most Ooh. states. Okay. So, like, in in Las Vegas, if it's, like, Southern Nevada Health, that's a private company. Uh, it's it's not it's not sponsored by, like, you know, the government. It probably has government aid, but the government doesn't do it. We, we're one of those cities that, like, that has outsourced a lot of um, stuff like that. Even, like, our parking tickets, that's privatized, which is crazy to me because, like, you know, you grow up thinking, like, these these are part of the things that, these are elements that make a government run and it's like privatized. Like, why is that? Fascinating. Okay. Yeah, it's probably like a money thing. But anyway, I was looking up on their website about like what jobs I can do. Like, there's a lot of lab work that requires like medical training, but you know, it's just a license. So, would you say that food got you into chemistry or the other way around? Um, food got me into chemistry. I, I will. Right, I will outright say that I was not really into the STEM stuff. Like when I was younger, back in high school, I mean, I did like IT and all that. And if it wasn't for like salty and salty adults, bad adults, bad adult leadership, then maybe I would have been like in tech and making mm-hmm. a lot more money. But yeah, I didn't. I don't remember liking science one bit. I loved STEM stuff in high school and middle school, and then I dropped it for art. <laughs> I was like, hold up, I just want to draw stupid cartoons, like, all day long. That's my job. I mean, there's a, there's actually, a, like, a, a job in that, like, doing scientific illustrations. That's a thing. Yeah, it is. It is a thing. Who, who knows? Maybe one day I'll be doing that. Have you, like, looked into, um, I dropped the opacity on this one. This layer. Party I, layer. I have no idea. Oh, the little, there's a little bar. Like above oh, the layers, okay. yeah. I'm getting the hang of this. I think doing like studying on like what careers you want is something like a lot of schools drop the ball on. Um, yeah, yeah, for sure. I mean, like I remember one class in middle. There's like one teacher that like will do it, and like 
I don't suppose you can zoom on here. It's okay. You can. There's a little at the top on oh, no. the top taskbar. There's a zoom, a little magnifying glass thingy. Oh yeah. Okay. I found um, that like most teachers, professors, etc., don't like talk uh, about possible careers. Hey, Hawaii! Thanks for the host, mate. Hi, Janie Jones. Ooh, someone in chat. Someone yeah. Hosting. Yeah, nice. y'all host. Hi, Hawaii. So I, 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 yeah, I find that most professors don't talk to me about like possible career alternatives. They're like, right. we're, you know, you're in animation. That's what you want to do. So good luck finding a job in that. If you don't, I'm not gonna explain alternatives to you or anything. No, I feel like right. no one ever brings it up. I think a lot of these professors are like in in 100 level classes or whatever, or like lower level classes. How however your college deciphers like what these classes are like the mm-hmm. one to 200 level classes the the freshman to sophomore classes those professors are probably tired i mean they've probably seen a lot of people come and go those are the break or break classes kind of yeah. like they like, weed out people who aren't serious like when if you so drop or not yeah yeah so i like understand that but it's just kind of like for for things like especially in the arts like or i think everything actually you should at some point look for a mentor and i think it is the responsibility of the school to at least give you that resource that, re- that resource yeah it's just kind of like your your on paper education isn't enough like you have to like learn what personality flies in in your industry like mm-hmm. like learning people skills and all that and like that's not to say like you can't learn that outside of school i definitely have like doing food and beverage from the house but that was the hard way and that was a lot of yelling and it's just kind of like it would still help to have like an a, a non-parent figure like teach you that because like learning that stuff from your parents like that's unfortunately where we learn most of our emotional intelligence it's by learning from our parents passively yeah yeah so sometimes it's not the best source of that and we need to grow out of um, some toxic or non-toxic, non-productive habits that we have with people that, like, translates into our careers. I mean, like, you know, wouldn't it be good to have your personality just fit into your life instead of just fit into your career? And whatever makes you a good person makes you a good employee, I think. But, I like, think you so. know. Whoop. Well, it, it went pink. Oh That's okay. Oh, my God. My bad. <laughs> I have a gap there. It doesn't bother me that it went pink. <laughs> I've got a big hole in this cow. Yeah, I don't think my school has like a mentorship program. I'm not too sure. I go to SCAD, Savannah College of Art and Design. I don't okay. know if we have one or not. You could ask your um counselor to see if they can help you find one because like that's being proactive and I think most educators are in administration really like that. Yeah. Just yeah. like just like in most colleges, like professors do usually love it when you when you go in for their office hours, when but it depends on the professor. All day, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Some like, professors wow, really hate that. Of course. Some professors are like, "Please show up to my office hours," and then you get there, and they're like, "Oh no." I'll Some professors really here. aren't any help though. They just sit there, and they're like, "I have to have office hours because the school made me." This is my requirement. <laughs> right. My math teacher is like that. I mean, like I I had like maybe one class of him. It didn't really count. He moved everything online. He was, like, not very personable. And um, his lectures are... I don't know if he's, like, seen the math person's writing, but it's, it's like, close... It's very illegible. I'm not saying, like, completely, but, but, like, very close to illegible. And they tend to write slower than they think, but I think that's most people. Like, I can't draw as fast as I think. Yeah, no way. I don't think I can write as fast as I think either. I think I can type as fast as I can think. Maybe. Maybe maybe I could handle that. That's possible. But handwrite, no way. Handwrite neat, no way. <laughs> this guy just like speed off some math. I was like, thank God for the freaking math book. Ooh, there's my cow. Oh, let me pan over here. Oh well, your udders are still your udders are still here. <laughs> what happened to it? Oh there it is. Here I'll Let me move it. He's a little strawberry milk cow. Or she, rather. Because cows are ladies. She should have a friend. Like, a chocolate milk cow. A chocolate cow, yes. I could do that. Let's see. I'm so glad there's a program like this again. Oh my god, it's so much... I was using Draw Pile for the last podcast, and it was 
such a pain to set up. I have no idea. I couldn't even remember how I set it up. I was so worried. I was like, oh, we're going to we're going to be stuck setting it up for an hour. But no, this this program is really great. There used to be a P-chat program that was like an embedded. It was embedded like this. But it was like not as advanced. Like this is like Photoshop. That other one was like paint with like one layer. Yeah, I found I I I was surprised. I was looking for shared canvas programs and I was surprised to find that most of them have like just multiple layers now rather than just the one that they used to have a long time ago. <laughs> I think they had two. They had um I forgot what it's called. But like one was called Sci and I think Sci is a full ass program now that they can download onto your desktop. Yeah, yeah it is. And then um there's this other one that I prefer. I don't remember the name of it, but gotten used to it. And then, well, my my drawing buddies, they all have careers now. Like, one of them, my drawing buddies on the internet, one of them's like, a levels designer for, like, all these video games. Ooh. Yeah. And it's cool and stuff, but there's, like, I don't say, I want, I don't want to say there's no job security, but you go by project. So you're, you're kind of like a construction worker. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, it's almost freelance work at that point. Kind of. I heard, you're, I hear there's a lot of like unpaid overtime in those industries because like you have to like get it out on time. Mm. And it's the same for like animation. Oh, if you're yeah. looking into that. Like. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> yeah. The game industry, the animation industry, they got a lot of that cram cram culture happening do cows have horns um they have i think they have little nubs okay good good maybe i don't well i think it looks cute so (laughs) this one will have horns so what are your inspirations with art like what inspires you to create um most of the time it's music i'm sure a lot of artists can relate yeah i think i was reading some sort of article like a long time ago with musicians and how they say like most creatives have synesthesia so like i think it's the synesthesia part of it like you hear like there is some some people ask me like what kind of music i like and i like like the urge to tell them i like music that sounds pink (laughs) (laughs) some music sounds blue the blue and green type of music like inspires me but i think maybe also it's because i like those types of colors i don't get that i do not see colors when i'm listening to music i don't get no. any, i don't get any color vibes no <laughs> that must be that's crazy okay. i just that's hear okay. i just hear it and that's it i mean sure it definitely helps me draw though listening to music and definitely inspires my art but i i've heard like i've since i've been a student doing art a lot of my classmates like have the same thing where they feel colors or see colors while while hearing music which is fascinating to me at least because i don't do it i don't have that i'm sure like it'll happen like at some point it'll happen i think i'll just acquire it (laughs) it It feels like a superpower that i just don't have and you guys have it and (laughs) it's whatever a superpower it's like a sense thing i mean like I think I was reading something about, like, Sixth Sense or something. I spent a lot of time reading useless articles, if you can't tell. But um, I was reading this thing about how um, the Sixth Sense is a thing, and some people have more than six senses. Like, um, for example, if, if you turn off the lights right now, you have a sense of, like, where your, or, like, where your body parts are. If you turn off the lights or you, if you close your eyes right now and, like, I asked you to t- to touch your nose with your left hand, you you would know, like, where exactly your nose is. Touch your mouth with your right hand, like, you'll, you'll know exactly where that is. And that's, like, not any of the five basic senses that we talk about in elementary school or whatever. Yeah. So, like, just like that, we have, like, other senses. I mean, like, some people have a good sense of, like, fashion. That's a sense, too. Like, a good sense for color. Some people have a good sense of time. Some people don't. And it's like, I think it's give and take. Like, you don't end up with, like, just your basic five senses. Like, you have other senses. Maybe I just am lacking most of those. (laughs) You never know. Maybe someday it'll show up. Maybe I have a hidden sense somewhere in there. I'll find it. I didn't know about my sense of time until, like, way later. I mean, like, going back to pastries... 
the thing that's like I've always thought that since working in it, like you cook with your heart, but you bake with your head. Like you do pastries with your head because like you have to time everything right, like one degree over and you're fucked. You know, if you add this thing before this thing, you have to start over now because you're fucked. It's things like that, but like I've developed a sense for that too. It's like you know exactly when your chocolate's ready or like when your ice cream is ready because like you know what to look for. You start hearing the bubbles and all that. And maybe that's not sense, that's looking for patterns. But looking for patterns is also another sense. It's what makes us intelligent. Yeah, I think for it, real. That, that, was, yeah, that was one of the criteria for defining intelligence in people and in animals, which is why we say crows are intelligent because, like, you give them a puzzle and they recognize a pattern. I don't. I don't have a very good sense of time either. The guy. I'm trying to think about my secret superpower when it comes to senses. Hmm. Okay. Uh, what do you like to do? Maybe that will help you find superpower i draw i sleep and that's pretty much it i go to work and that's it that's my life sometimes i (laughs) have school sometimes are you going to school right now yeah i am online of course my goodness it's been crazy i'm only taking two courses that's all i can handle right now oh yeah the online aspect of it is just terrible it's it's been rough are yours online too as well yeah mine's completely online like I was mentoring my math teacher like he it was supposed to be an in-person class he just moved it completely online his lectures are a mess thank god for the for the pearson textbooks i can't believe like i'm saying that but it actually <laughs> helps a lot yeah. i'm so mad that i can't pirate any of the books but looking back looking back to last week that ain't bad it's been i've i have a we do like lectures online and i just have such a issue staying awake through them because i'm oh my god that's in the chemistry class i'm just sitting in my home on my couch and i'm like "Uh oh this is bad <laughs> i'm going to sleep right now <laughs> i tend to sleep class yeah go ahead sorry i tend to sleep through like at least a couple classes a week for sure and then i have to catch up after which what classes are you taking i'm taking animation history which is the one that i sleep through the most because he never puts us in like breakout groups to converse he just talks the entire time and i'm taking digital communications and storytelling which one is that storytelling it's just uh it's like an english class for animation at scad that one's fun i like that class my professor in that class is great cool guy all the other ones are boring and boringer which is so sad (laughs) well if you're gonna teach storytelling like i would assume that you you'd be like a good communicator yeah probably def- why the, like a fun teacher definitely that's probably why because he, he's good at i guess keeping us engaged because he's a writer oh well, that helps when you, if your teacher is like passionate too about what he's doing yeah so i don't know some instructors like lost that passion long ago or whatever well that's sad which is sad yeah it's sad I find um, that there are just some professors that were ready and prepared for the whole move to online and some professors that are just, they feel underprepared and not ready. And Yeah, no, I definitely feel that. I like, where is this first? Oh yeah, this works. They like um, definitely don't have a good grasp on how to hold their students' attention online. That sucks. Which I mean, is silly like, because my college was like, hey, we're... We have great online programs. We've been doing it for years. I knew they were bullshitting me, but I had to take the classes eventually online, unfortunately. And I was like, oh, maybe they're telling the truth. Nah, <laughs> it really right. is just like everyone else struggling. I'm really surprised that um, a lot of instructors, like in a diff- in a lot of different like schools, aren't required to take I guess continuing education classes to help them improve their their instructions because it's kind of like with the world constantly changing like the way you give instruction and the way you teach should change to accommodate how how we're giving and giving and receiving information yeah like stuff is changing and i feel like a lot of professors have issues keeping up with that yeah they do and they get like really sassy about it like Like, well, you can't advertise your art on Instagram. That's not viable. I'm like, wait, hold up. (laughs) But it is, though. 
Yeah. But what if it was? It's freaking hilarious. I mean, like, how are I, you, I guess they're how like, how are you shading over there like that? I'm <laughs> like what? Like you're like basically painting a little bit happening. That's crazy. I don't know what I'm doing. Right. I'm just as lost as you are. I'm just playing with <laughs> the layers. <laughs> I was coloring on my sketch layer. I was like, why are all these colors so, you know, dull? Like, There's all right. layer I, modes. I, 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 I dumped it down to 30%. Okay. We got our we, did we, that. Could do, we could do a multiply layer. We got all kinds of layer modes. I didn't realize that. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's, man, gosh. I'm just getting used to it. I don't think I don't think our um, instructors in Las Vegas are like as bad just because like you constantly have to like stay in the know like we're a high traffic city and it's nice to see like a lot of our teachers like kind of be liberal like even the even the Republican teachers they're so liberal like compared to other Republicans speaking of Republicans like (laughs) I come to find out that like I know a lot of them and, like, they're, like, non-shameful Trump supporters. But, like, the way they explain it, they're just kind of, like, saying his tax brackets are more important yeah. than, like, his racism. <laughs> like, that's that's what I got from it. Yeah, and you're like, oh, you know, like, racism is always going to happen. But, you know, we should be conservative with our dollars and blah, blah, blah. And all that. Oh okay. A lot of people are like that. I live in an area, for sure, where that's an issue. Where they just, yeah. they love Trump because they want the monetary benefits of what he does like he so obviously favors the rich and a lot of the people near me are pretty wealthy yeah. so or, th- I mean, or like, think that they're wealthy and want <laughs> want to be <laughs> want to pretend like they're part of that kind of group it's it's weird like i don't know if you know who sheldon adelson is but he's someone who recently passed away um the restaurant that i worked for actually was in one of his casinos so he works he owns the palazzo and Venetian in Las Vegas. And even though he's like a big freaking Trump supporter, like how he carries his business is not very Trump at all. Like he paid my paycheck and a lot of people's paycheck through the pandemic up until like he opened in like March and May. And even then he was doing the most on the Las Vegas strip to like keep everyone safe. Even though it wasn't a lot, but he was doing the most because like um for a lot of like I want to say, like, Republicans with brains, uh, Republicans who are good at business, they're actually good at business, so they always put business first. They know what's going to, like, turn a riot in their in their workforce. So, like, paying someone through a pandemic over something they can't control and paying, like, for their insurance, like, through those eight months or however long we are shut down, that was a leadership step up that I can respect about the guy. For sure, but for he, sure. he did do a lot of things that like made me raise an eyebrow. Like we hosted a lot of Trump rallies at that casino, like so much. But you're just kind of you know this guy's writing my paycheck. I mean, like you don't have to agree with him, and you don't even have to work the Trump rally because you don't have to go. It's just like on our property, and it made me feel weird. But he passed away recently, and um, do you know who um, Thomas Keller is? No, I feel so out of the loop. <laughs> Thomas Keller was the guy that I worked for. So you know the movie Ratatouille. Yes. He does. He designed the plates for Ratatouille, and that restaurant in Ratatouille was based on his restaurant in um, somewhere in California. I think it was like Napa Valley or something, somewhere like fancy for fancy white people. Um, so like that restaurant was based on the French Laundry. So like that's one of those restaurants where you pay like five hundred dollars for like a specially course meal for that day mm. or whatever. So like when Sheldon Adelson passed, he he just kind of like, oh my condolences, thank you for all your support due to whatever. He got like backlashed because of like you know all the all the Trump support that um, Sheldon Adelson did. So like he basically got canceled on Twitter like two days after that <laughs> Adelson's death, and that was that was. Uh, a few days after they quote unquote put me on call slash fired me or whatever oh, i was kind no. of like, karma i'm for it that's so weird it's wild it's been wild for me like i'm just cruising right now i mean like again like i wanted to get out of it already like i worked on my real estate license so like that's coming through so i'm just kind of like screw like like they made me wake up at four in the morning to like go there and work from five to like 3 p.m 
I'm just kind of like, that, that, that does irres- the irreversible damage to my health. Like, if you have to wake up at that time, it doesn't, it doesn't matter how much sleep you get. Your body is not going to want to wake up at four in the morning. It's well, just not going to. The, the earth isn't even ready for that. Like, the sun's not even fact, up at that time. Before, before the sun gets up. Ugh. It's pain. Sometimes, like, because it's the winter, I do work before the sun is up. Like, and right. Then, but it's only a little bit before. That's really early, though. Yeah, it it really is. It's like, I want to push something. I, I'll, I'll write my governor or whatever. Like, you should, your company should, like, compensate. Let's say, like, if you have to wake up before, if your shift starts before, like, 6 a.m. or earlier, like, you get you get time and a half for your hourly pay. Yeah, I get paid extra if you wake up super early. I wish. How I look, you can run the business as early, so... You know, you either don't have a night shift or you, like, give more money because, like, you can't say night shift and morning shift that I work is equivalent to, like, what you do at work. Because it's kind of like, you can wake up at 2 and come to work at 5 and, be and like, be all right. It's different when you have to wake up that early. You're just not built for that. No, and it's not, it's not, like, healthy. At least offer, like, very good health care for people that have to wake up so early. I'm I'm very I was very fortunate. I mean like I guess I'm still on their insurance plan because I'm not fired yet or whatever. But like I'm very fortunate that like we're very liberal in Las Vegas. And like again, like even the most conservative um employers give you like a health insurance plan that gives you a lot of like what's it preventative care. So um yeah. uh, for example, like my, my health insurance, your yearly checkup is free. So if you're a woman, your op guide is free each year for your, nice. like, nice. really late exam. Birth control, that's, I don't pay a copay for that. So okay. that's nice. If you ever need, like, a flu shot, that's free too. So, like, it's whatever. It's not great health care. Because, like, I don't know, if you, like, ever worked a full-time job and you, like, go into the human resources office and they're like, you you know, pick your plan. And I was kind of like, why are there different plans? Like, why is this, like, a phone plan? <laughs> this is my body. I'm not, like, an iPhone that I can choose different plans for, like. They're just kind of like, this one you pay, this one's just deductible, and then this is kind of up to, you know, X amount of hospital stays. And you, like, really have to evaluate your own health. At that point, like, what if you're, you're, like, super young? What if you're, like, 20 years old and you don't know, like, what health shit you're going to get into? That's about, like, that's, what's... that's going to be me soon, man. I mean. Yeah, so, like, it's scary yeah. because you're just, you're just kind of, like, do I, should I start worrying about hospital stays? Oh, God. Uh, of course, like, I, I opted, I opted for, like, the cheapest plan because, um, <sighs> they're already paying me nothing, so I'm not going to pay more for, like, hospital care or whatever doesn't make any sense so like you know things like that I mean, you're just kind of like what is this baffling like give everyone the same plan like what is this premium shit like i thought <laughs> premium were only like for cars or something it turns out the health insurance companies think that we're cars and not people it's exactly yes that's exactly how it is and the hospital stays that'll really hit you like that's expensive here in the u.s Oh yeah, my God! I'm just kind of like put me up in the Hilton if you're gonna charge me that much. Yeah, one ambulance like ride is thousands of dollars. It's ridiculous. I can't believe like, I mean, some ambulance rides are covered by insurance, but it depends on which private company comes and gets you. And this is kind of like. I have to explain that. I, my family is from Taiwan. So, like, if you didn't know, Taiwan has, like, one of the best universal healthcare systems, like, in the world, like, nice. better than Canada. So, there's this kind of, I was explaining, like, this was long, so long ago, like, seven years ago. When was the last time I talked to my auntie? But we were talking about, like, the economic dis- despair in, like, the Americas. She's like, it's like that here, too. Like, the young people are complaining. I was like, no, 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 no. You guys might be in an Asian country and you think that we're making American dollars, therefore we're better. I was like, no, the cost of living is more and we don't get fucking like free health care. Like imagine getting shot on the street. I mean, you can't imagine that in Taiwan because guns are, Ill- are illegal. But let's say imagine you got shot on the street. No fault of your own. It was a crossfire. And you still got to pay for the hospital visit. Yeah, That's a slap in the face right there. Yeah, man. <laughs> Just walking home from your Burger King job. You can't like, even afford making- it. <laughs> yeah. 
Burger King doesn't give a shit because like you're technically still part time. Oh my god, that's another thing I would rant about. Like big companies like Burger King and Panda Express, like they can work you fucking full time, but because like I think they go by state. So in the state of Nevada, if your company is under fifty people, you don't have to offer insurance to your employees. So like I think all these franchises, they're just kind of well, our franchise is under fifty fifty people, so therefore we don't have to do that. Which is which is shitty, and that's exactly how they got all that like you know that bailout money for like little businesses like yeah yeah that, that's how they went through that loophole. I think Applebee's got like what? a bunch of money. <laughs> yeah, they're Applebee's. going out of business. Applebee's going yeah, because out of business. They're, yeah, because they're saying that like oh our branch has under two hundred people, therefore we ought to qualify. That's kind of like no, as a like, small business. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like they have their like shitty i mean like they're not shitty lawyers they're like pretty good lawyers to like find a loophole like that like good for you you're you're the devil <laughs> like that's that's what happens like bigger companies have better lawyers and find themselves into loopholes to save more money get more money the richer you are the better your lawyers are yep i have a lawyer though my friend he's just my friend that i mentioned before he's like you ever get a dui <laughs> you know, call me up. Kind of like I don't plan on getting a DUI. I drive fantastic and I'm drunk. <laughs> not fantastic. Just drive like I'm not saying okay. This is gonna sound really bad. I know like everyone in other states, like even people in California, which is by the way has the highest DUI in like I think the West Coast because like I can say this because I'm I'm Asian and I was born in San Gabriel, California. And I like have lots of Asian friends in California. Hands down, California Asians kind of trash. Damn. Okay. At everything, and this is kind. There are nice ones. This is kind of the majority of them. So many like anti-black Asians, even though they they pull from um from black culture. Oh yeah, yeah. I have a huge problem with that. Like I can rant all day about that. But like anyway, like those people are the type of people that. That drives so bad in general. I mean, it's kind of like, don't blame anything else for your bad behavior. Like, if you drove bad when you were drunk, you are probably already a bad driver, most likely. Not 100%, but most likely you probably already are. Unlike that guy, like, in Florida that turned into a zombie that one time. That was really a big Turn- news topic. Did you ever hear oh, about yeah. that? He, like, took bath yeah, salts. The bath salts, like, the bath yeah. salts guy. Oh, no. <laughs> I think bath salts might be like slang for something else. Really? It it might be. I'm not sure. It's Florida, man. It is Florida. Oh. Everything happens down in Florida. Have you done that meme where you um <laughs> type in your birthday and then yes, follow by? Yes, I did. I did. I've I done think, that. Which which what did you get? I think I got like an alligator one. I. Which is, got something about a library i could do it right now we could find out what do i gotta google florida man let's see what happens yeah drunk florida man kicked out of library told cops he was jason Bourne. yeah that one <laughs> that florida was so wild <laughs> that was the one that, that came out on my birthday i've been to florida once and ooh, it the the people down there in the area that I was in were pretty strange. They had a lot of rich white dudes, like driving their little ATVs in the street. I'm like, what is happening down here? That sounds pretty Florida. Yeah, it's definitely pretty Florida. That Florida is like Florida. what I imagine like those rich pedophiles to like live, just so they're like closer to like poor countries. Probably, probably. I read a lot about. I read a lot about those, and it, like, breaks my heart that, like, these families have to sell their little girls into the sex industry, or, like, sell their little girls to, like, marry some dude that's, like, 40. Yeah, it sucks. It's awful. Yeah, it is. It's so, it's, like, there's so much crazy shit that happens in this world every single day that we don't even see or, like, experience ourselves. I don't want to experience it. Definitely not, but it's still crazy to think about that it happens. This cow that I'm drawing, this went somewhere. <laughs> what do you? Tra- <laughs> do you like her? She got her high heels on. I like her patch. Hello. Her oh my god, dog! I'm doing a podcast. How are you? Oh, yeah. I heard you have a special guest. I do have a guest. This is my mom, by the way. 
Hi, Mom. How are you? And? And? What's the guest? It, her name is Angie, a fellow artist. We're talking about adult things. Do you have your t- the, the, the uh, camera on? No. So you're just drawing on a tablet? Girl, how many times do I have to tell you that you are not invited to the podcast? Best podcast ever. Oh, she's coming down here. Oh. No. Wow. Hello. Hello. Ah. Hi. <laughs> Hello. Uh, Hello. Ooh, that's pretty cool. Did she draw that? Yeah, man. What, what's her name? Amy? Angie. Angie. Oh, my. Sorry, Angie. Thank you're good. I guess my mom is a frequent guest on my Twitch stream. Not really. I'm only the mail delivery person. Danny Jim says hi. Well, they call you Mom Poostrophy and Mama Fee, so, like, I don't know. I think that means that you frequent here a lot. You're probably here no. once a week. No, no, definitely, no, no, definitely. Janie Jams, would you say that my mom comes and interrupts my stream at least once a week? No, <laughs> editor, you could cut this out up to your discretion because I have an editor. Oh, that's right. Yeah, she's cut me out before, right? <laughs> I can't. I don't know. When does the podcast once a week out? or more? Janie Jams no said, "No <laughs> way. No, not true. Not true. When does the podcast air?" Whenever I could find a guest. You have a great podcast voice. Do I really? You do. I love listening to your podcast. Oh my gosh. We haven't talked about enough art today. Either. What station is that? Station? <laughs> yeah. Z100. Catch me on Z100, dog. All right. I'll be there. All right. All right. I'm 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 leaving. Okay. Jeez. <laughs> what, what, what do you want more? Do you want me to... No, you're all right. You what can... else do you want? I, I, don't, I don't know. You walked in here. I thought you had something to say. I did, and I forgot what it was, because I was so Classic. excited by uh, your drawing. Oh, did you draw the udders on those cows? <laughs> yeah, man. No, that was mm. yeah, drawing some is, cows. Is there something going on with your drawing compared to your special guest? Yeah, I would say that my guest is adept, and I'm a little bit behind. I would say that yes, that you are. Um, can I blame of, it on me being younger? Yeah, I think you're fooling around today. Okay, cool. <laughs> I've seen better art from you. <gasps> wow. You're definitely <laughs> fooling around. Your guest, on the other hand, seems to be taking this very seriously. Whoa, Mom. Hello. <laughs> Your mom's ripping you apart, man. I po- I'm being roasted. I posted your Christmas card on Facebook, by the way. Okay, thanks, Mom. I wasn't able to tag you for some reason. What the... Am I untaggable for you? No, that shouldn't be. I don't have you blocked, I don't think. <laughs> Careful. Okay, bye? Yes. Okay. Farewell. Farewell. Oh my Thanks. god. <laughs> Never have I seen someone's mother call them out, Janie Jams, I swear to god. Man. Hey, hey, what? What? What did I do? Nothing. Okay. You didn't do anything wrong, you're fine. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> should we answer more yeah. art related questions or should we continue talking about uh intense subject matter? Were you talking about pedophiles in, in <laughs> we're talking about <laughs> my poor art how sad it my art podcast be like, wait, uh, what am I even gonna title this this uh because I upload this on YouTube. The title's gonna be something strange, crazy. Hold on, I'm I'm thinking of something that like was in my women's studies class. <laughs> something Race, cows, and gender. <gasps> Whoa! I gotta write that down. <laughs> <laughs> that was that was like close to a book that I had to get for women's studies, which I dropped like during the summer, by the way, because you this dropped bitch. women's. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> this bitch! It, I took it over the summer, and I it, it's fucking hot in Las Vegas. If you didn't know, it's we're, yeah, we're like sure. right next to Arizona, so I like, came up from the hot sun. Like I walked across campus, and this bitch is classroom I put my head down and she like kept talking and then she just kind of like stopped in her sentence she's like can you put can you put your head up because I don't like that and then she like gave me that like fake Karen smile I was like oh hell no I'm like dropping this class and she also like had the audacity to like make us like get a book that she wrote or something like that like she referenced herself oh that's so funny as class material I was kind of like too so like when it I ended up taking it online, like, the following semester, and, it, and one of the books is called Race, Class, and Gender, and it was just, like, short essays about race, class, and gender. <laughs> and, like, I, I wouldn't say it was a bad class. I mean, like, it did open my eyes to, like, um, the concept of privilege, which, like, which I, I never understood until, like, I read over there. I was like, okay, like, I can see, like, why that happens, because, like, my I think I mentioned real estate before, but I my mom was doing real estate, 
like ever since I can remember. And like I would overhear her in her conversations, like what makes housing prices drop. And like one of the things there that I've noticed I experienced as like race, class, and gender affecting everyone's lives was unfortunately the more black families I move into a neighborhood, the more the property value seems to drop. I don't know like why, but that just happens in in Las Vegas anyway. I don't know if it's still happening. I'm sure I don't that's know. A thing. Yeah. Like, that's I hate it. Weird. I'm just kind of, that's shitty, like... America, like, I will say, America like... America is racist. We live in a racist Yeah, every, everybody been known. I mean, like, it's been more apparent for me anyway, because, like, obviously I'm, like, not black, so I don't... And then people, most people don't perceive me as black, um, so I don't get as much, like, backlash from, like, being outside and just being in my own skin color, mm-hmm. but... Like the Trayvon Martin thing, that that's when it like opened my eyes for the very first time to to the violent part of it. I mean, I remember, I distinctly remember like another time that like I didn't believe that I didn't, I refused to believe that someone would think another person is unattractive based on their skin color. Like I just refused to believe that because I'm like, how is that even possible? Like if you're if you're beautiful, then you're beautiful. Like you can be beautiful in all shapes and sizes. I don't, I don't get it. But I remember, like, I was working in this fancy Chinese restaurant, and my coworker walks in. And I'm like on Instagram, and I, I think I just attended EDC that year. I remember I was in the middle of the crowd, and I saw a very pretty girl. I didn't know her. My friends like, and we gotta go. I was like, wait, I need her Instagram. So I got her Instagram, and I checked the next day. I was like, yeah, she's fucking beautiful. So like, I think it was like during the fall. It doesn't matter. My, my coworker walks in. He's like, hey. You follow any pretty girls? I was like, yeah, I do. So I like, pulled up this girl's Instagram. And she's very undoubtedly pretty. Like, there's no doubt. They're like, you can't argue it. Like, she's pretty. She yeah. had had like a very symmetrical face. Her eyes are like almond, and she she preferred like braids as her as her hairstyle choice. But like this guy, <laughs> he's just like he like looks at her. And he's all like, she's not pretty, and that's when it clicked for me. I was like, oh shit, you're racist. Damn. I thought you were a nice guy. It turns out that you're a racist motherfucker. Holy shit. It blew my mind. I was kind of like, there, there was a time where I, I'll draw a black girl later. There was a time where I like exclusively like shot, like photo shoot, did photo shoots with like girls with darker skin because I was kind of like, I think I had an ex that told me that he preferred to shoot lighter skinned people because like, and I quote, their skin just doesn't show up as well. I was just kind of like, dude. Wow. That's you being a shitty photographer, firstly. <laughs> that is. That's terrible. A lot of artists say that, uh, too. A lot of racist I'm artists are like... like don't, don't say that to anyone. I'm just kind of, don't say that to me. Like, I might not be black, but I was raised black. Like, my stepfather is black. So I'm just kind of like, don't fucking say that to me. Like, do you only... Like, if it doesn't come out right, is it because you're not used to working with that skin tone? Like, yeah. someone's skin tone isn't right or wrong, firstly. <laughs> For real. A lot of artists go like, oh, I can't draw people of color because I just don't know how or like they refuse to or only draw white people. And that really bothers me a lot when I see that. Like, this is how I like, didn't be better. Like, I don't know. Study. <laughs> look at reference. Like, how hard is it to really do that? It's not that hard. It's Ask really the black not. person. Like, can I can I use you as a study? It'll yeah. be like, they'll most likely say, yeah. If you ask anyone that, they'll most likely no, say yeah. yeah. When you ask anyone if there'll be an art study for you, they're always like, yes, of course. So I would I, love to. Like, it's not that hard to find reference at all. And there's Pinterest, of course. All those, There's like a billion portrait images on Pinterest to like steal from if you need yeah, to right. practice. I'm just, I'm just like baffled at the blatant like, like people think it's okay because like it's somehow limiting or like it affects their product. And I was like, no, that means your skills aren't good. Yeah, whatever yeah. it is, I don't want to hear it. I mean, like, I'm not gonna say that I'm like the world's greatest artist or whatever, but it's just kind of like you have to be inclusive. Like, drawing people of different races and ethnicities actually help you a lot, and asking people to help you that helps you socially, man. Like, I think there was a time that I read a lot of self help books too, <laughs> and um, one of the things it talks about actually, these self help books have like a thing going on, like they agree on stuff. So one of the stuff that they agree on is like when you ask someone for a favor, that's actually doing you the most favor because people love being asked for help. Mm -hmm. People are flattered when you ask them for help. I'm flattered when people ask me for help. I definitely am too. 
Yeah, so it's just kind of like at the workplace, ask for help. That shows that you're, you know where your skills are. That shows that you trust whoever you're asking for help from. It shows a lot and it shows strength, I think, too. Like knowing when you need help shows so much strength. And I don't think a lot of people realize that. So it's kind of like, no, you don't have to like do everything on your own. Fuck that. Like, I think I had a few friends that think that they needed to do everything on their own. I'm just kind of like, why don't you reach out, evaluate what your strengths are? Because I'm not saying that, you you know, you, you personally can't do all these things. But it's just kind of like, you're stretching your time and resources too thin. Why not spend time on something that you know you do best? Because like, every individual can do all parts of a big project. I'm very certain of that because I'm also, I also like believe that anybody can do anything. But given the time span and like your capacity to do all that work at a hundred percent in all, I don't, I don't know, elements or whatever, you're not going to be able to do a hundred percent. You're going to get tired. So like you're going to have an inferior product. So that's yeah. why like animation teams work in teams. Like can one person do all this? Absolutely. In the billion years. Sure. But it's just kind of like you want to speed up the process and have a good, product in that time. you need other yeah in time it's just kind of like the combined time on this is gonna beat like your individual time yeah <laughs> you need a colorist you want to you want to have someone who just colors someone who just inks someone who just does the storyboards otherwise if you're making a show it'll come out in like maybe like a hundred years if you just have maybe more if you just only have one person yeah. working on it i mean like that's what i worry about like authors people who write like, I, I worry about them when they get really old. Like, um, Margaret Atwood, she wrote she wrote on A Handmaid's Tale. But she yeah. also wrote the series I really like called Mad Adam. She, it, it was a trilogy and she finished it. But before she did, I was scared that she was, like, going to die because she's, like, 70. Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> Which I found out she's Canadian, so they have health care there. So they'll keep her alive. <laughs> yeah, she'll live longer. She'll be okay. <laughs> Which, by the way, if you ever read the Mad Max series, don't finish it. Just read the first one. Really? Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's not worth. She, uh, she's a good writer. Don't get me wrong. And like, she does this thing that um, a lot of good writers fall victim to. Um, Neil Gaiman is another one of my favorites that does this. Is <laughs> um, they, they, they are attached to their characters. That those are their babies, which is sweet. <laughs> like they, they end up like making sure everyone's good at the end of the um the story so it goes like it goes on like a few chapters too long you know mm-hmm. what i'm saying yeah like a like a whack epilogue broken epilogue kind of thing it's not even an epilogue it's just kind of like and then this person went back to heaven and yeah blah, blah, blah. like i'll have to tie all these characters loose ends right now last minute i find that i don't i'm not a very good writer definitely not that good of a writer and i don't read enough either recently do you want to yeah i wish i would read some more books i i am for class right now but they're mostly just assigning us stuff that i've read like in high school and stuff which is so annoying i hate when colleges do that assign you the same books that you already read in high school a thousand times over (laughs) oh yeah like the regular like what's it called public domain books yeah like, read okay, degree guys. Gatsby a bunch of times. Yeah, we're gonna I, read Gatsby again. I'm like, no. <laughs> God, I read so much Dostoevsky. I was just kind of like, can we not? Like, this guy sucks. <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure he like righted it out like towards the end of his career because like I read this guy. You, you know who he is, right, Dostoevsky? Yeah. He he had a gambling problem. <laughs> So, like, he wasn't even, like, trying towards the end of his career. I think he, like, got divorced or some shit like that. Like, he, I know he, like, lived in Europe to, like, just gamble. And it's just, it is really sad because it's kind of, like, I'm not going to say that, like, he wasn't a good writer. I think he did, he did, like, have his heyday or whatever. But, God, these, these people, I mean, like, I think he, like, felt towards the end of his career. And he just, like, wrote because, and people read him because, like, he was famous already. And, like, unfortunately, a lot of people don't know when to, like, tell someone their shit is trash. Aw, yeah. Aw. he's famous. Well, I've been, my English professor assigned us The Things They Carried by Tim O'Brien. And this is the fourth time I read it for class. Like, just for school in general. I'm so annoyed about it. Having to read it again. I don't know why that happens. Why don't 
they assign us different books in college than in high school. Not too sure. Such a pain in the neck. Yeah, I wonder that too. I mean, like, from elementary school through high school, I feel like we have been learning the same stuff. I mean, like, towards the end of high school, they kind of, like, prepare, kind of prepare you for college classes. But not really. It is kind of like you can, over here, you can, damn, you can take college courses while you're in high school if yeah. you want it. But, like, if you just take college courses, I mean, college-level courses in high school without the AP thing, like, it, you still need to take it again in college. And I'm, I feel like it's because, like, I don't know, they don't want people over overreaching or overachieving or some shit like that. That's what it feels like. They run out of content to, like, teach people or something, or they don't want people getting too far ahead. There's, like, so many I guess. factors, to it, but it doesn't make any sense to me, like, why you would do that. Yeah, once once you're in... In high school, all the material is going to be the same in college as well, especially like for gen ed. If you're taking a gen ed science for college or math or whatever, it's probably going to be a lot of the same stuff that you learned in high school already, just repeated. Yeah, unless it's like, you know, specific to your major, then it starts yeah, getting yeah. fun. But- yeah, if it's your major, it's different. But for me, it was it was... All the same stuff for English and science. Well, not science, because I took astronomy, but English and uh, math. Right. No, the English and math portion, like, I was so bored. I mean, like, I'm taking math right now, but it's, like, calculus, so it's, like, a little bit... Yeah. A little bit more difficult. I mean, like, I'm not gonna lie, I was lost the first day of class. But, you know, I'm getting getting the hang of it now, maybe. (laughs) This is kind of the English part, so I was all like, we're writing a persuasive essay again. Oh, yes. I've already written and like life. five of those in my life. Like I don't need to do it again. And it's just kind of like if your if your professor if your instructor is good, then they'll like let you pick like a subject, so it can be interesting. But then like there's the ones that like need a bunch of control, so like you know you have to like pick from the bin. Like you can write oh. about these subjects. So I was like, oh shit, okay. So we're being treated like children again. Great, cool, full circle. Yep. And when I took math in college, I had to test to see what math I would get in. Yeah, I yeah. land, I landed my my poor self into elementary algebra oh, <laughs> for no. my for my math class. It was so boring. Oh my god! Some of the questions were like, "What's a one hundred plus one hundred? And I'm like, "Oh my god! Why am I here?" Well, like oh. I don't know. Is this a trick question? Is this what a is hundred plus hundred? Oh my god, that class was so bad. I, I apparently I'm so bad at math that I was placed into that. But I was I don't think I was that bad. I think it might have just been the test. It could have been. I was like sometimes the test is like written tricky, or most of the time it is. And it doesn't really test your intelligence. It tests your trickiness. I was kinda of like if you wanted me to be tricky, like and if this is like for a law course, sure. Then I need to be tricky. But like this is like for art, gen ed art. So what's the point, fam? Yeah, I'm an I art like, major. Why are you trying to fool me on addition? I have no clue. I wish <laughs> I could tell you. <laughs> School is weird. College is so weird. College is strange. It's like, I don't know. It's like you're an adult, but like it still infantizes you. I don't like that. Yeah, I, f- I got lucky, I guess, with my school that I went to for my associates. I went to a county college. Okay. So I, it was like a great school. I really enjoyed it. And the professors were fantastic. And now coming over to a four-year private university, I find myself getting more, I don't know, just like they treat you like a child more at the four-year private institution than at the two-year community college for some reason. So I strange. It's, it's the same over here, I think, but it's just kind of like I'm, I was at a university first. That's where I got my bachelor's. And I'm planning on, like, transferring over there again just because, like, the community college doesn't offer just, like, a science degree. Mm -hmm. It has to be, like, science. It's trade school. So it has to be, like, a science degree in, like, microbiology or, like, or health sciences and all that. I was like, no, I just want a BS in in chemistry because it's more flexible. Like, you can do a lot of things. Like, I can be a flavor engineer, for example, for skills or some shit. Like, Yo, you know, yeah. <laughs> a lot of things are chemistry. And I'm just kind of like, okay, like, 
I'm only going the to this school now because like it's a lot cheaper than UNLV right now. I think who knows? I'm just gonna ride out this community college until I need to like go to the really fancy classes. But like this, it's it, I took a long hiatus between school, so like it's I think I graduated college. I'm gonna date myself right now. <laughs> first, go for it. First time, um, in 2011. So like that was when I completed my four year degree in four years. And then yeah, like I was in middle cut, school. Cool. Cool. <laughs> fucking old you can't tell but i am take a sample of my blood you'll know how old i am but like yeah so like my second time back it was in culinary school which i didn't finish by the way because i was like why go to school for it when i'm already like working for fucking ratatouille man you know yeah for real (laughs) like i didn't end up finishing but like all these poor professors they're just like syllabus day was so fucking serious. They're just kind of like, I need you guys to understand that you need to come to my class to like pass it or like have any chance of passing it. And then, just, and then they're just kind of like, your grade is your responsibility. I was like, no shit, who else's responsibility is that? <laughs> it's kind of like, like these poor fucking teachers like having to like say that to you. I thought that was like a given. Like <laughs> a lot of these students are like right out of high school and have been kind of. I guess and, like, they took by out, their parents. Yeah, they took after like their their Karen moms or whatever. Yeah. And like I it's so sad. And like one of my professors, he's a he's another like one of those Republicans who was saying that like you have to show up to class. He's like, Look, you're gonna be working in food and beverage. If I can't count on you to show up to work more than a quarter at a time, then like, you know, I'm gonna fire you. So this is no different. Oh, well, that's a great way to explain explain it. Cause like when you sign up for something, you have to you have to show up to earn your whatever for it but he also used the same argument to say like you know college shouldn't be free because there's no incentive to show up i was like oh okay i don't agree with that uh, <laughs> <But> go off <laughs> i go off like <laughs> strange the, the like i don't know if it's just like the culinary school part because like showing up to the culinary job is really really fucking important like showing up to the service industry because you are the product that the that your company's selling so I get it. Like, there's none of that. And like, there's, I mean, there's still like, you, you're allowed four absences a week rule um, in the syllabi. But, you know, it's not stress as much in like, I'm taking a chemistry course right now and a math course. So like, nobody, you just kind of, you show up or you like don't, you know? I find that like, like how you said that the professor always needs to say that you're responsible for your own stuff. Yeah. I always find there's at least one or two students per class that need to hear that <laughs> like for some reason yeah. they are that they're they're that targeted message like they're they for some reason think that the, the world is gonna like cater to them it's super strange i'm always like why like why does that need to be said like that shouldn't need to be said and then there's at least one student that that has to be said to over and over again oh yeah for sure if you don't show I, up to I, class <laughs> like what do you expect is gonna happen my mom's gonna come and call <laughs> oh man um i don't know about you but like being in architecture like i'm so glad for my architecture experience just because like they are education based all our professors work in the industry or have worked in the industry or either retired in the industry but they work hard a lot of them like come and teach us after their nine to fives yeah from, like to ten that's dedication and you got to appreciate that and like it really beat me out of like wanting to see my grade throughout the semester. And it, that was like, I don't know if you want to call it a culture shock, but I want to call it a culture so- shock. It was a culture shock for me to like go back into culinary. Like it's a trade school for fuck's sake, firstly. So it's just kind of like you perform or you don't. Like it's performance based. Mm-hmm. But like, why are we concerned about like our letter grade? Like, can you bake a cake? That's what they want. This is kind of like, if you can't temper this chocolate in the chocolate class, then I'm sorry. You can probably assume that you're going to fail. Oh, no. <laughs> it's like, it doesn't matter what your letter grade is. I was like, your performance should tell you what it is. Yeah. Like, right back in there. I'm not going to say... <laughs> okay, I'm, I am going to say this. <laughs> I hated killing high school. <laughs> Just because, like, the amount of, like, head assery and dumb shit I saw. Really? Like, I was baking but like before anyone can take any of the major specific courses because there's like there's like culinary like overall if you like want to be a chef chef with like steaks and stuff and then there's like pastry 
And then there's like management. So I was in pastry. And like before you can take the pastry classes, you have to take the the prereq for it. And it's like basic cookery. I was like, okay. So like we learned how to like grill it salmon or whatever. Like I already cook at home. Like I'm good. Like yeah. this is going to be a breeze. And it was a breeze. Except the other people. Like I rem- this was in my class. I like went to this class because um, I went to a different section because I had work that day or whatever. So I had a partner. She was a sweet girl. but oh my god just because you're sweet doesn't mean you're smart and that was fine <laughs> like you know how a measuring cup works right like i assumed of everyone course. else did. i would hope okay. so um me too i i lost all hope for anyone in the culinary industry that day because um she's my partner and like in in the big kitchen or whatever you have these like half gallon pictures quarter gallon pictures i think they're half gallon and they're still measuring cups. They have like measurements on the side, so they have like I think I think you've seen those like Pyrex Pyrex ones, where they have like different units of measure. So yeah. it was like that plastic, and it was in liters, grams, and like the quarts, which is like the system that we use at home for cups, whatever. So like the recipe said that I forgot how much water we needed, but she came back. She's like, "This is enough, right?" I'm just kind of like, "Look, I'm not trying to insult your intelligence, but this isn't right." Like. You know there are side like lines on the side of this measuring cup, right? Telling you how much water you need. That was all like you want. You wanted to fill it up to here, so no, that's not enough. Just go back and get more water, and that would have been okay if it was like you know first week of class or something. This is like the week before finals, girl. <laughs> like, oh no! <laughs> my own Christ! And I had another guy like this is a lot of jargon. You know those like. You ever been to a buffet and they have like those big metal pans? Yeah. Those are called hope pans. Yeah. And you know how like big they are. So we had a pan that big, about like four inches deep, and there was um like hot clarified butter in it. This guy comes up and he like takes um an oven mitt. It's not even an oven mitt, it's like a pad made of oven mitt material. And he tries to lift up that big old pan to like dump butter into his plastic measuring cup. And I lost my shit. I lose my shit a lot. I lost my shit at him. I was like, what the fuck are you doing? He's like, I just want some butter. I was like, there's a ladle right here for you to use. Take it. <laughs> oh, my. And I only lost one because, like, it was at our station. If that shit falls over, I'm not I'm not going to clean it up. I was just kind of like, I had no remorse yelling at other people in that environment. <laughs> just because, like, if you think I'm mean, wait until you work, fam. <laughs> wait until you work. That sounds so crazy. I've... In community college, I often see students that aren't doing too hot because they usually don't show up to class and stuff. And <laughs> for some reason, they always say after they after they failed, after they failed and dropped out of like every class, they're always like, you know what, I'm going to go and go to culinary school and become a chef. And, yeah. I'm, and I'm always like, it's not easy. Do you realize how hard that is? Like, if you're not doing well here, you're not going to do well over there. I don't know why that's always the first thing. Oh my god, culinary people go blood, to. Sweat, tears, man. People, oh, I'm like, you can't even show up to your English 101 class, and you're expecting to go to like a culinary school. I, are you nuts? That and uh, and uh, what's the other one that people always bring up when they're when they're failing all their classes? I've had a few students tell me they wanted to become marine biologists. After after they failed math, they're like, you know what? I think marine biology is the thing for me. I don't know why it's those two. It's always those two. Marine biology or culinary. I'm like, well, don't do that. You're crazy. Crazy. They know that like if they take any biology or chemistry course, they have to take organic chemistry, right? I, I don't know if they, they can't even show up to their math classes half the time. I don't think they know that. Organic chemistry <laughs> is that class that like even the smartest people you know say they hate it. Oof. So I'm I, just kind of, if you're like any sort of biology, pre-med, anything like that, you got to take that course. Let me just tell you, I'm not excited, but I am. Like, hopefully I'm smart enough with everything else to like take it later. But that's just besides the point. I'm just kind of like, these people that you're talking about are freaking crazy. That also like segues into like how people, how much, how little people respect food and beverage people. I'm just kind of like, okay. You think you can do this? Come do this because I bet you you can't. No way. You don't have you don't have good timing. I'm sorry. Like, oh my god, I I was so heated the other day when I saw like some guy who works for Amazon. And keep in mind, I have my best one of my best friends works at Amazon. It's 
boring as shit. Like, you just stand around and do nothing because it's slow right now. And, like, this guy's saying, oh, like, these people flip burgers all day. I work for Amazon. Uh-huh. I'm skilled labor. I'm kind of like, your labor is not more skilled. It's actually less skilled than a McDonald's worker. Like, a McDonald's worker needs to go and get a health card, firstly. Deal with shitty customers and, like, put out things on time and, like, put in the orders in a timely manner. Like, everything they do is time-sensitive. Like, yeah. I hate when people say the flipping burger excuse. I work in a restaurant right now. I work at Panera. And Uh it's at the beginning of the pandemic, it was, like, Oh, essential workers, like, we support the food people, the restaurant workers are so essential. And around now, it's starting to go the opposite. Like, Yeah, because the it's like conversation is just a burger is. flipper. Yeah, because yeah, of the, the wage change or whatever. They're like, why should the burger flippers get higher wage? I'm like, boy, I- <sighs> have you seen the amount of work I have to do every day? I mean, I don't think you could do it. No, they can't. A lot of people, like, break under distress. And honestly, working in food and beverage, like, even though I hate it and I'm, like, coming out of it, I'm glad for it. It's grown me a lot as a person. It's grown my patience a lot, even though, like, I know deep down I am still, like, a little ball of rage because I I do get, like, very violent when I've been drinking. It takes a lot of self-control and it, like, gave me a lot of self-control, but there are some days I can't stand it from people like that. I'm just kind of like, the fuck? Like, if I ever go back again, I'm just going to be the worst customer service person ever to, like, rude people because I'm just kind of like, what do you want? Yeah, I have to, like, bite my tongue at work every week because people come in and just yap at us dude, about I, stuff. Dude, I worked for Panda Express. It was the I was just, I didn't think that people actually treated fast food workers like that. I was like, wow, you got some fucking nerve coming in like that. Yeah, for real. <laughs> I'm like, can you leave me alone? Like, man, I just want to make a sandwich. Or like, we're just <laughs> like, trying to fuck, bro. Like, <laughs> the hell? It's awful. Fast food yeah. is is. I mean, it is a crazy job. Hi, Wildberry. I got a. I got Wildberry in the chat. What's up, Wildberry? Happy Friday. Welcome to the podcast, Wildberry. <laughs> <laughs> we're talking about stuff, all kinds of stuff, crazy stuff. We should be able to wrap up soon too. If you have any anything more that you want to talk about last minute topics uh, i'm good yeah you think of anything <laughs> i mean like now that you put it like that i have stage i like have performance you s- what you were like ch- <laughs> talking and now all of a sudden you're like yeah <laughs> i don't know <laughs> i don't know what do you want to talk about i don't I heard know that's the one i used to work with when when in Panda express i was kind of like you know what good for him if you want to honestly if you want to move up in like management and all that on your own store, Pan Express is great. The I people would... who work for it, not so great. But you know, I mean, you're not for me. I guess so. I, I, I like my job at Panera, but I'm mostly a delivery driver. I don't do a whole lot of the kitchen work because I don't want to. So I, I just sit and do dishes and boxes and all this tedious stuff. I don't usually touch the food that often, but. You don't want to. It's gross. <laughs> yeah, I'm always like, nah, you know, I'm okay. I've been offered to help in the kitchen before, and I'm always like, nah, you know, I really like delivering and stuff. And when I'm not delivering, about I spend about half the time of my day doing deliveries and the other half in the back of the okay. restaurant or at the register helping there. Okay. But it's tough. And it's like, I bet. it's sweaty and like just awful. I come home like smelling so wacky every day because i'm like sweating in the back and then there's the bread all that bread and yeast and like brownies and stuff back there and it's like what do i smell like i don't know but (laughs) i don't smell i don't smell good when i come home from work and then these these customers have the nerve to call me like a burger flipper or something and like that i don't deserve the the 15 dollars an hour and stuff it's like i'm like everybody deserves a living wage like nobody's asking for like a limo or whatever yeah like the smell is also why and the cleanliness is also why i don't want to like work in back of house anymore after this job just because like my kitchen is like notoriously clean like the one in thomas keller notoriously clean and like i've interviewed for other kitchens and like dude this smell yeah i can't stand it i was kind of like this is not up to code i will say like all restaurants even the cleanest ones are not up to code because there's just so much to do yeah and you have to serve like every single day there's not a lot of time to do all that code related stuff you know i got time for that 
It's insane. The restaurant I'm working is insane. Crazy job. But I enjoy it. it. Panera's good to me. I mean, I only make $5 an hour when I'm doing deliveries, but whatever. (laughs) I'm super curious if that wage being hired up to 15 I heard that it might affect split pay, which is what I'm technically under right now for my job. I, I'm i worried about like what's going to happen to my delivery wage, because when I'm driving, I make five an hour. But when I'm in the restaurant, I make like 11 or 12 now because I got a raise. But Well, I'm sure it's going to be different by state. Yeah. I'm sure it'll be also a guideline. Like, what's going to happen to my... Because my $5 wage in the car is $5 because I make a heck ton in tip every day. It evens out eventually. I don't agree with tax tips. Yeah, I don't get taxed. I get cashed out every single day. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. (laughs) Whatever. (laughs) My boss is not watching. tips to, like, the government for, like, tax purchases. Like, I never... I don't agree with that. It's kind of your employer chose not to pay you and like you're taxing a gift from a patron. Like that's not right as a government. Like you either allow them to pay you more or like you have to say that like, you know, you can't take away wages from people. Like I have to like share my tips as a server. I was sick of paying the entire staff. Like I paid out 8% in tips. So let's say that I made 20% all night just from tables like the best you can get out of that is 12 percent. like if you're a good server you like deserve more than that i mean like granted there's some days i still walk out with 300 dollars a night but i'm just kind of like i could have more it shouldn't be my responsibility to pay your fucking staff yeah for real no i keep my tip at the end of every day i i like they cash me out of the register which is super sweet and it's not taxed oh man Oh, I think I'm allowed to say that. <laughs> what? <laughs> I think I'm allowed to say that I cash out. Of th- I, it seems sketchy whenever they do it to me. Like, hand me a wad of cash at the end of the day. And I'm like, Ooh, this might be a little illegal, but I don't think it is. As far as I know. <laughs> Just standard Panera business. Panera. Mm, Panera bread. And now I can't. I, like, hate bread now, pretty much. Why can't you eat bread? No, I love bread, but every every morning I come in, I usually come in at like 7 or 8, and I'm responsible for cutting all of the bread that was baked overnight. Right. It's, it's so much, and the smell really gets to me, and I smell, it's just so strong bread smell after a while that it makes me nauseous, and I can't have bread like for a couple days after I work. Like I after a it. shift, I'm like, oh, no way, dog. I can't smell any more bread. No way. That's me with desserts. But, like, I don't know. I think it's because I'm picky. <laughs> like, store-bought dessert and, like, store-bought cake. Like, it, I care about things I never used to care about. <laughs> like, texture. What's wrong with, <laughs> like when what's you, wrong with store-bought cake? <laughs> it's funny sometimes. You I t- I feel like the sugar granule is not like completely mixed <laughs> in. Like you work in a Thomas Keller restaurant, everything has to be smooth because he does that like gastronomy shit or whatever. You work for the ratatouille guy once, and now ratatouille changes now your I'm rat- life. I am ratatouille. That's pretty cool to have on your resume. <laughs> it is too bad it pays thirteen an hour. I was kind of like, really? What? You're like only yeah, 15? you're like worth that much money. He's also one of those companies that got, like, the small company bailout. He's pocketing a ton, that guy, I'm sure. I still need to go back to, like, my job and get my knives back. I'm just kind of like, look, I'm not officially fired, but go get your I knives. feel like I will be, like, in a second, so can I have my stuff back? That's scary. I will go get your knives. Yeah. The thing is, here's the funny thing, like, it was right after my birthday that they fired me, and I knew it was my birthday. I asked for, okay, they dragged me to the holidays, you know, we were open in August, dragged me to the holidays. I worked at least three six-day weeks. I did Christmas by myself. I steamed 200 crib relays by myself for Thanksgiving. I worked Thanksgiving, all of the holidays. I opened, like, three or four weekends by myself, which is not easy because you need to come up and set up your line, and... I, the biscuits are our problem for some reason. So I did the biscuits. You have to like let that shit rest or whatever and like get it out on the line by six o'clock. I mean, by what's it? Eight o'clock? You come in at six. You have to get that ready by eight o'clock. 
whatever. So I did all that. And then I'm just kind of like, you know what? You let these other two people have like major holidays off. I'm going to get my birthday off. Like I just wrote, I'm just kind of like, I did all your major holidays. It's my birthday. I don't want to see you guys. So then like, I like asked them for the schedule. I like texted my coworker that I work with a lot. It's like, hey, girl, like, can I have that schedule? And then, like, she didn't respond. And I was all like, well, something's up because she always responds. And then the next day, I texted my manager. No response. So they ghosted me for two days. Yeah, and then, like, the following Monday, or I think it was the following Tuesday, they, like, called me. They're like, and you're on speakerphone. I was like, okay, what the fuck is up, bros? And then she's like, we have to push on call. You know, I don't want to do this. You feel so bad. And I, like, found myself consoling them, which is fucked up. I was like, yeah, don't worry about it. Like, you know, these things happen. She's like, yeah, we'll we'll call you when we need you. I was like, okay, whatever, cool. And I hung up the phone. I was like, that was fucked up because, like, you feeling bad doesn't pay my bills. And, like, you did this so that I can't sign up for more classes. Fuck you guys. Um, That's awful. That sucks. Yeah, and then I'm just kind of like, and, like, her and my other coworkers, I'm just kind of like, I love you guys like family, but I, for the record, you guys are fake as shit for not, like, telling me what's up. Because, like, obviously, you knew something's coming up, but you didn't, like, say nothing about it. Like They, like, ghosted you for all that time, too. You could have been looking for, like, more work or, or whatever. Yeah, I'm just kinda, like, it was, granted, it was two days, and they, like, got back to me eventually. But it's just kind of like, I'm great at confrontation. Like, you can tell me, like, whatever's wrong with me. It's not going to make me feel bad. And at the same time, like, I don't mind bringing up a problem. All these people that I work with, for some reason, have a problem with, like, confronting bad feelings. And I'm just kind of like, you can't do that. You're a manager. Like, have some balls. (laughs) No. (laughs) Tell me you, like, feel bad about this. Like, you're a manager. You have to deal with the bad feelings. I don't know what to tell you guys. Like, so yeah, like, like that's they how they want. Me- they wanted you to feel bad for them. That's yeah. So, I'm just kind of. So yeah, I just it is very stupid, and I'm just kind of like bros. <laughs> it's whatever. I'm still mad. I'm still salty. I'd, okay, I'd still be it. salty too. I mean, this was like super recent, wasn't it? <laughs> that was the weekend of the ninth. Oh, so man. it's been a little bit over a week since I was quote unquote put on call. And I was just kind of like, this is stupid. I'll still maybe help them, but, like, maybe not. I don't know if I would or not. You know, if you could find something better, I wouldn't bother. Well, I'm doing real estate with my mom, so. Or as soon as the license pulls through. The thing with real estate, I don't know about your state, but, like, our state, they still do everything like it's the 1980s. So everything's, like, paperwork. (laughs) They told me I needed all these papers. I was like, I threw that away already. Like, so I'm just kind of like, so I need the fucking paper that you guys handed me <laughs> three months ago. Okay. Wait. Yeah, real estate's pretty s- cool. It it can be, yeah. I'm my excited uncle, about My uncle's a real estate agent over in California, and it's, it looks like fun, honestly. I want to do real, I want to do a business real estate, but like you need two years residential in Nevada to do it, which is fine. So I'm, I'm doing my two years residential. It'll be fun. And like... The best friend that I told you about, his mom, I actually want to work with his mom because, like, I never believed in role models until I very recently. <laughs> my friend's mom is a single mom by choice because, like, she felt that her relationship was no longer, like, useful to her or, like, benefiting her. So she's a single mom. She put both her boys through college out of pocket. One's an engineer and one graduated in law. And she still lives very comfortably She does her business, but it's just kind of like she has time to, like, travel and she has time to, like, buy a business park and, like, get rent from businesses monthly. And, like, that's something that I want to invest in because, like, a business park, kind of lit, you know? So, like, I I asked if I could just, like, work with her. She's like, yeah. Like, we've been friends forever. She actually trusts me. I don't know how many Chinese people you know, but, like, in a business standpoint, I not very. A, tr- I live in a pretty predominantly like Chinese town for some reason. I don't know why it is <laughs> over here, but like New Jersey, it's kind of weird. But I do. <laughs> but yeah, like. All right. I, th- um, I think we're running out of time. Just about. Okay. No, I don't want to kick you out, but <laughs> we have been. T- I feel like we've been chatting for a long time. Yes. Definitely. I mean, is that- 
I it's think not like we can't chat later. Yeah, we we could absolutely chat later. You're in the Discord, and you could always contact me whenever you want to chat. I'm around, and you gave me that idea for the uh, for this for the podcast title, so that's good. Oh my god, there's a spam bot in our Twitch chat. <gasps> oh, and there's no spam mod. Bot. Yeah, want to become famous by followers, primes, and viewers. Uh. <laughs> that's a that's a ban. <laughs> Who is this guy? Oh my gosh. All right. Well, thank you for coming on. I totally appreciate thank you it. For having, me. yes. Uh, it was a lot of fun. A lots of interesting talk. I have to say, pretty pretty interesting. Oh, I'm glad. I just rambled, but somebody no, it enjoyed it. A, That's good. It was a good ramble. I feel it was it was very good. I didn't have to bring up too many of our of our like uh, questions that I ask when there's nothing to talk about <laughs> situation. <Yay>! I'm interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that was good mate that was good all right well thank you so much uh feel yeah, free course, to chat with me later yeah if you'd like yes yes and i will see you on twitter or on twitch all right yeah yeah that sounds good mate, if any of you guys want to follow angie the links will be in the discord and i will type them into chat later all right thanks for coming on have a good one right, thank you bye bye all right and if you guys are watching this on youtube this was streamed live if you want to come over and watch these live i stream monday wednesday friday from 3 p.m to 6 p.m eastern standard time thanks for stopping by